It says it's preparing, setting up your meeting. I think it's probably live already. Let's check. Yes, there it is. Okay, then YouTube has to have time. And anybody who's joining me now, hey, Lauren. Okay, see, Lauren says that I'm live. Anyone who's joining early just sees me kind of mumbling to myself. Eh, okay, let's get this set up and then we will get going. And how is, how is everyone today? How are y'all doing? You know that I don't care. It's not that I don't care. It's just that that, you know, that's just kind of chit chat that people do to keep everybody busy while they are setting everything up and waiting for people to show up. And I think this is how I have it set up. And I'm trying to figure out how to set this up so that it doesn't show you ads actually during the live, because I, th I think that that, I'm just going to leave that here because that's extremely intrusive. And I do know if, and I've said this before the last couple of weeks, if, if you come to watch like, or rewatch a live and there are ads like every two minutes, that's YouTube doing it. And it just means that I forgot to come back and take them out. So if you do see a video like that on my channel, let me know, just leave a comment under the video and say, there are a lot of ads. Now, if there are ads like every 10 minutes, don't complain. I'm talking about like every two minutes because, you know, I got to make ends. Okay. So anyway, yeah. Now, I mean, most people who have YouTube channels that are monetized are doing it to a certain extent to earn some money. They don't pay you much. So when people complain that, you know, I have too many ads, there are too many ads. I'm like, oh, well, how much did you pay to watch it? And those are probably the same people <laughs> you were thinking, I don't care. The people that complain about ads on YouTube are the same ones who would get super offended if someone wrote to them and asked if they could have a discount on their products. And if you think about it, mm, you're basically wanting something for free if you don't want to watch ads, which I, I don't like ads either, but come on. There's Bill. Hi, Bill. Bill is my um, moderator, and Bill is—I don't—I I, we—we've said this before. Bill kind of got roped into being my moderator against his will, but he does a very good job. Bill's screen name is Holidays Lane. Go over and check out his shop. Buy some ornaments. He has Easter ornaments and Fourth of July ornaments and Halloween ornaments and ornaments for everyone. But anyway, uh, yeah. So anyway, the people—the people—I I get these comments every now and then there was an ad on this video and I did not like it. I'm like, oh, just freaking skip the ad or don't watch YouTube. Cause how much are you paying? And if you do want to pay for YouTube premium, you can skip ads, but you're going to be paying something every month. Sorry. Sorry if you're cheap, you know, but yeah, the people, the people that complain about ads that are placed normally. Now I understand if the ads come every two minutes, cause that's extremely intrusive. But if you're complaining about an ad that's placed every 10 minutes or something like that, which is what I generally try to do, then, you know, you're probably, like I said, the same person that gets really offended when someone writes and says, can you give me a discount? Because it it never goes both ways for some reason with that mentality. Anyway, um, okay, what was I looking at over here? I don't remember. It doesn't matter. Oh, I know. I'm going to go over here and see if there was anything in the community tab for comments for later. I can't think of anything that's happening on Etsy specifically that is different is like okay today i know that today is the first day where if you're going to log into the etsy forums if you want to go to the etsy forums um you have to be logged in like you can't just be a random person and they've done this for privacy i see some people complaining about it i don't know why yeah do you want the general public to go on and see the things you're saying about them because there are a lot of people in the Etsy forums that say some really stupid stuff. And it's probably better if you're, if you have to be logged in. And I believe that you have to be a shop owner. Now that's not going to stop anybody who really wants, you can sign up for an Etsy shop. Although now you have to actually pay them $15. So that's good. And get your identity verified. But there, there are plenty of people 
who just would sign up for an Etsy account just to go and lurk the forums. I don't know why it's not, it's not that informative, but I think like a lot of news organizations go to find the things that people are complaining about and they'll, they won't have any problem having someone sign up for an account that they can go in and, you know, use it to get into the forums, but you have to be signed into your Etsy account to get into the forums now, which is fine. That's not a big deal. Um, there have been lots of glitches with people trying to upload listing photos. There have been glitches with people not being able to have payments processed. It's just a glitch city over there. It's just glitches left and right. But nothing definitely strange and unusual that I can think of that's that's so widespread that we all need to know about. But that is the one change that is happening today that is something to make a note of, you know. Okay, as far as the questions in the community tab, and if you have a purple star next to your name, it means you're a channel member. And, um, you know, I was thinking, okay, I'll talk about that later. Um, but if you have a purple star, you're a channel member, and that means that you get first dibs on the questions. So I'm going to go through the questions that were in the community tab. And let's see. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. How can I turn off and stop people clicking on the admirers thing on my shop page? And I answered some of these already in the, in the, you know, responses in the community tab. And it's basically someone wants to know if like it shows how many people have favorited your shop. You can't turn that off. That's an Etsy thing. You can't turn it off. It's going to be there. And if people want to click on that, they can see the people who have favorited your shop. Okay. There are ways to use this information that stays within the Etsy guidelines, and it's actually, it's it's kind of informative. If you go to your, if you go to your competitor shops and see who has favorited things recently, you can kind of see what people are planning. Like someone will have all kinds of baby stuff. And so they're planning a baby shower. So I'm like, okay, people are shopping for baby shower and they're looking for these products. That's good information. But it, if they don't want you to see their stuff, that's on them. So people can see your followers. You can't turn it off. But if the followers themselves don't want people to see their favorites, they have to turn it off in their settings. And it's public information. So it's not an invasion of privacy because they have the opportunity to turn that off themselves. Okay, uh, let's see. Who is this? Kemmel's Creation says, any thoughts on Michael's handmade site? I'm seeing it everywhere. They sure are spending a lot of money advertising it. I checked out my categories and didn't see much of what I make. Wondering if you've heard any feedback from other sellers on it. I have heard some good feedback and I've heard some bad feedback. I personally have not signed up for it because I definitely don't need another thing to keep track of uh, personally myself, but I know that there are people in the eShop program who have signed up for it and who are getting sales without doing pretty much anything. Now I did hear, and this is, this is kind of rumor. I heard that Michael's, you know, the, the maker place thing is kind of this, this month, this month or the next couple of months is going to be kind of make or break as far as, as far as bringing customers on. So they, you are probably going to see a lot more ads and they're trying to get more customers to come to the maker and just to be aware of it. It's hard to get people to be aware of things, but from the people who have set up shop there, uh, I've heard some people have had problems with payments. They do hold your payments. There's a reserve system set up for payments, which is not unusual, but I, I do hear people who are making sales on there without doing anything. So, you know, it's, it's something, if you want to try another marketplace venue, go ahead I personally, like I said, I personally am not going to do it just because I've got other things to do. And it's not my priority to increase my sales of products because my sales of products are doing fine. And I don't, I don't, I just don't want, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I'm at the point in my life is like, I don't want to do it. I'm not going to do it. But I've heard mixed reviews, but I do know people, I, I know people personally who are making sales on there. So go ahead and try it. Why not? All right. Um, next question. Can I have your and the chats? Okay, so this person is asking for the chat's thoughts. So get ready. Okay, on titles on Etsy specifically, and I'm sorry if it's long, I keep more readable, definitely not keyword stuff, but I do try and include as much info as possible in case someone doesn't read the description and it shows what the listing offers. Okay, so, and then she gives some examples. Examples of a couple of my titles, easy dishcloth crochet pattern, intricate with basic stitches and photos. Uh, ink saving expert version also available, US and UK, Tawashi, and that's her bestseller. 
Now, I think that that's a perfectly fine title. And the, the point the point of this the question, I think, is that people now have been saying, oh, you have to give your title short. No, you don't. In this, I don't know where this comes from. Well, I do know where it comes from. Um, it, it's the idea that Google only shows, and this is Google. We're talking about Google. We're not talking about Etsy. I recently did a video on my tutorials channel, and I don't remember if it was three, two or three weeks ago. I put a, a nonsense word, and I think it was random nonsense. I put the word random nonsense at the very end of one of my titles, and that listing came up when I searched for random nonsense, and my titles are long. So Etsy reads the entire title. If you if you shorten your titles, you're basically just leaving off opportunities to put more keywords in there. And the person that asked the question says that she does longer titles because people don't read the descriptions. And by putting things in the titles, they see a lot of the pertinent information right away without even going to the description. And that seems to work for her. Good. I would say to do that, I would put the long, longer title fill it out because Etsy reads the whole thing. Google reads your whole title if you're worried about Google. When you're in Google search results, they display the first part of it. And I think that's why people think your title has to be short. It doesn't have to be short, but it's going to be cut off if you have a longer one. Big deal. Who cares? Because on Etsy, it's very unusual that your Etsy listings are going to even show up in Google search in that section of search on the first page in the text related boxes. It might show up in images or shopping. In, in search itself, it doesn't matter. You know, and I actually switched, when I switched all of my, um, I, I imported all of my listings from Etsy into Go Imagine with the longer titles. I didn't change a thing on Go Imagine. And they, they say the same thing, do your title shorter. I'm like, sorry, no, I just left everything the way that it was. And I'm found on Google in Go, for Go Imagine listings all the time, okay? So I do not worry about it. The search engines read the entire title. The search, the search results might not display the entire title. So put your most important thing for the customer up front, but it reads the whole title. So when anybody says it doesn't read the whole title, they are full of crap, and that's the crap truck emoji. Use it liberally. That's that's a piece of advice from the big book of BS from Etsy. Um, so anyway, yeah, I would go ahead. I think your titles are fine, and don't worry about it being too long, as long as it reads clearly and cohesively, and it gives people information, that's a good title. All right. Next, uh, I think this is the last question. If a user clicks on an Etsy ad for one store, but ends up buying a different item from a different shop, who pays the fee? Okay, if it is an offsite, I, okay, let's say it's on Etsy. Let's say it's an Etsy ad, um, but I'm assuming you're talking about offsite ads. Yeah, okay, so I think this would be it for an offsite ad because if if they're, if you're on an offsite place, wherever that may be, and you click on an offsite ad, you go to Etsy and you don't buy from the shop that showed in the ad. Nobody pays the fee. Etsy pays the whole fee. Okay. And, and we're not paying the whole fee when we pay our offsite ad fee. Etsy pays a big percentage of that anyway. So nobody pays the 12 to 15% if the person clicks on my ad and then buys from Bill's shop. It doesn't work that way. If they click on an ad from my shop and they go to Etsy and then within 30 days, it's a 30 day cookie. So it's a 30 day window. If they come back and buy anything from my shop, then I do pay the fee. But if they go from Etsy to an ad for my shop and then they go somewhere else on Etsy and buy, nobody pays the fee. That's how that works. So there you go. Um, and Janet says, the long titles have replaced days of the meta descriptions. Yeah, see, that's another thing with Google. Google doesn't use meta descriptions. And they, they say in their Google you know, handbook, which is a, full of lies anyway, but they, they say they don't use meta descriptions. It's not necessary. The search engines are smarter and they don't need to be told what the page is about, which is what the meta description was for. And you really don't need that. Anyway, that's all the questions, I think. And if anyone had posted a question late in the comments like in the community tab then i did not see it i just i'm opening it up so go ahead and post it in the chat but let's let's talk about what you guys want to talk about <laughs> bill posted you guys are posting the crap truck see if you're a channel member 
And to be a channel member, you have to join the channel and see right under the video, it says join. It's that button. People are like, I don't know where to join. Join, join. It's $2 a month. Okay. And I, I was going to say, I'm going to start doing something for channel members. And we've done this before, but I'm going to do like a, a monthly SEO kind of like a, just for a channel member Q&A. Right. And so we might look at an Etsy shop or something and I'll schedule that ahead of time. So you guys know when that's happening, but we can do it on Zoom so that we can talk, you know, so we could ask questions and actually I could ask and answer questions and that kind of thing. And we could just do that. So for channel members, I'm going to start doing that every month and we will start that in April because this is March. All right. Um, but yeah, for channel members, get first dibs on questions during the lives. And they also get these fabulous emojis of the crap truck and SpaghettiO juice. And who doesn't want that? And all the all the tinfoil hat squad. All right. Oh, also, I just posted a video over on my cake channel because it's really about, it's for customers. It's a video for customers, but it's about stolen pictures and explaining pe people have their pictures stolen. And then people say, oh, this one's ripping me off because their picture is over on Amazon. I'm like, no, they, the picture on Amazon is stolen. And people don't understand that, but I just posted that. So please share that with your audience. Share that video far and right wide with your audience because customers need to understand this and they don't, all right? The stolen, the stolen picture thing is driving me crazy. All right, first question. I converted an old digital shop into a handmade products shop. So far, two months and super slow uh, momentum. Wondering if I made the right move or start from scratch is better. It doesn't matter. It's it's just going to be um, it's just going to be a matter of time, and the the listings that you're putting in there now are going to have their own momentum. But you, you know, it's it's the same as starting anything else. Etsy's going to have to figure out your listings and show it to people. You're probably going to have to send your own traffic to Etsy for a while, and Etsy has become a place where they really need us to send our own traffic because it and for our own sakes too. I posted a video yesterday on, was it yesterday about the SEO stuff or two days ago? I don't know if it was yesterday or two days ago on my tutorials channel about Etsy SEO and how it's working in 2024, how it's working today. And it you really need to send your own traffic because there's a lot of the types of search that Etsy is using that doesn't even have people typing things in. They're just leading them down the path. And that is much more unlikely that newer listings will be found that way. And as long as people are still typing things in, which they are, you know, it's not 100% that you're not going to get that type of traffic brand new, but it's better to just assume that you're going to have to send some of your own traffic unless your shop is so well established that you're getting organic traffic all the time. But that takes time and a newer shop is not going to have that. So, you know. Uh, okay. Anything else? If no one has any other questions, we can all just leave. I'm making a quilt. So I'm in the middle of sewing. Janet says, sometimes they just get overwhelmed with all the smoke and mirrors Etsy puts out there for us to wade through and search for the truth. I don't know what you're referring to. Oh, you're just talking about like the long titles. I don't know. It is just it is just crap truck information. Um, oh, thank you, Bill, for posting that. Yeah, and my tutorials channel is is uh, Kara Bunton Tutorials. This is Kara Bunton, and I believe that the link is in the description. Okay, are there any glitches as of this morning? Yes, there's glitches all the time. You know, I I don't know every single glitch, but people have been saying there's there's things about they're, they're having trouble uploading pictures, they're having trouble blah blah blah. Um, so there's always glitches. They're always changing something and something is always broken. So yes, there, there are always going to be glitches no matter what you do and what time of, of day it is and whatever. And you haven't been able to navigate the shop since last night. That's not good. I would say the one thing, if you're having trouble on one device, try switching to the app. If you're having trouble on the app, try switching to desktop, try switching browsers. Sometimes different browsers act differently. It's, it's strange, but sometimes doing that will work. And you can always check in the technical issues of the Etsy forums to see if anyone else is reporting the same thing. But if you are having a technical problem, always post it in the Etsy technical glitches forum. 
because the technical issues is the only form that they actually look at. And they need to know if something's going wrong because they, they can't fix it unless somebody tells them that something is wrong. So anyway, um, okay. How are you coping with the suspense of Etsy not announcing the new fees yet? I am not coping with it well. And there will be, there will be a, a fee change soon. And I think it, it's definitely going to be, see this, it's going to be big enough. This is going to be a big one, y'all. This is my prediction. I predict, I predict, and I might be wrong. I might be wrong. I don't know. But you know, no matter what they do, whenever they change anything about fees, uh, people freak out. And and I think that the level of freak is going to be high on this one. We'll just put it that way. It's going to be big. So because of that, I'm trying to like think what would if if I was the Etsy board, when would I announce this? And looking at the stock price and looking at the way that people freak out and they know they're going to freak out, it's either going to be way before the Q1 shareholder meeting or the same day of it. It's going to, it's, it's either going to be like that afternoon, because I think the last time, was it the fee increase? There was something where they increased a payment or a fee or something and it was literally done half an hour or like an hour before, maybe I'm exaggerating. It was the same afternoon as the shareholder meeting. And I don't remember what change that was, but it was enough that it was big enough that people were going to have a freak out. So I th personally, I think if I was Etsy, I would actually wait until the day of the shareholder meeting and then drop the bomb on everybody and not give the shareholders enough time to go and see what the reaction is. See, this is you don't want people to go over there and see what the reaction is. You want to be able to go into the meeting and say, and this is what we're doing. This is our new plan, you know, and then you deal with the mess the next day. But we'll see. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I have an idea. Yeah, and... Ella says, isn't, or is it Ella or somebody else said, is there a new, oh, Jan said, is there a new fee for some countries? They're changing things bit by bit. So first they increase the, like the, they, it's like a fee to start a shop. And then the identity verification and stuff, they're kind of rolling that out. And today they have the change with the signing in for the forums. So they're dropping these little changes. I don't think they're, I don't know. We're going to wait and see. I don't know what the change is going to be. I think it's going to be big, but that's my opinion. And my opinion is worth exactly what you just paid for it. And all you're all watching this for free, right? You're all watching for free. So that's how much it's worth. We'll see. Um, I don't, I don't think it's going to be, see, Ella says in the summer, like July, when it's slow. I don't think so. I, I think it's going to be sooner than that. And if it was me, I would do it the day of the, sh I would do it at 4.45, the day of the shareholder meeting. Bef and so nobody has time to go and look to see what the freak out level is. And then you can go into the meeting and, and give them all the good news. Okay, that's all. That's what I would do. Okay, um, Jill says, is searching on Bing or Yahoo like Google or different? It's very different. Are, are they even used for search much? They're not used as nearly as much. I think I, if you look at the market share of each search engine, it's it's completely different. And I think that they definitely are different search engines. So you're going to get different results in them. They don't depend on Google results. And I think that uh, DuckDuckGo uses Yahoo search, if I remember correctly, although I could be completely wrong about that. But most of them are are built on different, or they're all built on different search engines. I'm not sure. Some of them use the other information, the other's information, but... Um, Google is separate and it has like over 80% of the market share for search. So Bing and Yahoo aren't used as much. And it's still a good thing to optimize if you can. I, I don't do anything for Bing or Yahoo search at this point because I, I just don't. And I think I've, I'm found in there. But the vast majority of people use Google. And the way that Google results have been so terrible recently over the last six, seven months, maybe even the last year, I think a lot of people are moving away from Google, but not that many because people are just creatures of habit. So, yeah, but but they're not the same. Bing, Yahoo, DuckDuckGo, they're not the same as Google. It's different. All right. Um, 
And Bill says, I think it was the 6.5% fee right before the call. Yeah, I think it was. I think I think it was a fee increase. They dropped it right before that earnings call because that doesn't give people time to go and, you know, I mean, think about and that. That was when they had the Etsy strike, right? Yeah, um, that was right before the Etsy strike. And if investors had come into that meeting with, but Etsy sellers are striking. And it's like, no, they're not. But if they had come into the investor meeting with that, then that is going to change the stock price. So you have to time it very carefully. And there's, you know, I don't know. And Deb says, there's always the annual October surprise when they make big changes. I don't think they're going to wait that long. I, I think they'd be foolish to wait that long, honestly. So we'll see. Um, and when is the shareholder meeting? I don't know because Q, the Q1 isn't even over yet. So it's January, February, March. March is the end of the first quarter. And then they usually have it five or six weeks after, four to four to six weeks. So it's going to be probably the beginning of May at some point. Um, we will see. But yeah, I think uh, I, I that's what I would do. Yeah, so... Ella says Etsy's taking notes on what Kara said. If if I Etsy, if I were you, that's what I would do. Because people, if they're if you're doing what I think you're going to do, number one, it's not a bad plan. I don't think it's a bad plan. I don't think people are going to like it, but I don't think it's a bad plan. But if you're doing what I think you're going to do, do it right before the shareholder meeting. Although I would prefer if you do it earlier so that I can get my status, my curiosity satisfied because it's kind of, it's driving me crazy. I want to know. I want to know. And we'll see. Um, yeah, but I don't, if, if they're doing what I think they're going to do, I don't think it's a bad plan, but it's going to mean that we have to do some math to figure out if it makes sense to sell the same things that we're selling on Etsy or at all, you know, we'll see. It's not a bad plan though. So don't have a freak out. And when they make this decision and when they make the announcement, I will have a YouTube live about it the day after so that we all have time to sit. And I have a video ready to go already. I have a video ready to go. Honestly, I do. And it's going to go out and it basically tells everybody to calm the hell down because I know everyone's going to freak out. Everyone's going to freak out and you just need to calm down and do the math because it might not be a bad thing. That's what I'm saying. All right. Uh, question. If Etsy decides to char charge a monthly membership fee based on the number of listings, would you stay or leave? I would 100% stay, and for, but not necessarily for every shop. Like I just shut my vintage shop because I don't pay attention to it. I rarely get sales there. I don't have time to put into it. And I honestly, I shop, I shut it now because I didn't want people to say, oh, she shut it because of a fee change, right? So I, I thought about, well, maybe I should keep it going until they do that change. And then I can use it as an example of making that decision. But I'm like, no, I, I just went ahead and shut it. And I, I put it on vacation mode. So if I need to use it as an example, I can go in and look at the numbers there. I, I'm 100% going to stay on Etsy. I'm not leaving Etsy because no matter what they do, it's, it brings you traffic and it's, it's usually worth it for me. It's worth it, but not for everyone. And it's not, it's not going to be the same for everyone. And I, I honestly, I just recently deleted all the silicone mold listings out of my shop too. And I did it now because I didn't want it, people to say, oh, she's doing it because of this. It's that's was on the, it was on the agenda for the year anyway. So I went ahead and did it. Yesterday, I deleted them all off of my website, except for the ones that I have in stock already. So I'm not making anything to order. I'm just selling the things that I have in stock. And I've gone ahead and made that change. But I'm not going to leave Etsy. I don't care. I don't care. If you know if they're going to charge a monthly membership fee, I think that's great. I don't think it's a bad idea. Um, do I recommend Everbee as a digital product seller? No, I do not. And that's all I'll say. Uh, let's see. Does Kara have any guesses as to what the change is going to be? I have some things in my head, but I'm not going to say because it could be anything and we're all going to have to wait and see. I think it's going to take some form that nobody knows and only Etsy knows. Only Etsy knows. So anybody who says, I know exactly what's going to happen is full of crap. Nobody knows because it's all guesses at this point. We're just waiting. We're just waiting. Okay. 
Uh, please put question in the front because I can't tell if you guys are just chatting or if it's a question, but I see a question here. Is using SEO in the written description equally important as tags and titles? No. Um, they, they just recently, Etsy just recently started changing, like using the first 150 characters of the description, which is just a little bit longer than the title. It's not very much. And they said that they're using it for more organizational purposes, which I don't know what that means. But it, they're not using it as like direct order word match to the search queries, as far as I know. But it's not, it's not as important as the title. The title is the most important. You put your most important keywords in the title, for sure, because that's always the most important. And if you look when you do your listings, it says tags, and then in parentheses, optional. You don't even need to put tags in. You have to put a title in when you make a listing. You don't have to do tags. And you have to do some type of a description. So do a good description, but write it for the customer. And if you're writing a description for the customer, you're just naturally going to be including keywords in there that people will search. And whatever Etsy uses the first 150 characters for, that's up to them. But the title is always the most important everywhere. And that's that's just it, period. So um, any more questions? What do you guys What do you guys want to talk about? I don't see anything, but see, sometimes YouTube is really slow and I'll say, oh, let's, let's just end early. And then 10 questions come rolling in. So I'm trying to think what else I can chat about. Not much. Yeah, I did actually, I, I took all of the silicone molds out of my website. I took them out of Etsy a couple of weeks ago and I took them out of my website yesterday and it felt good. And I told my husband, I'm um, honestly, hey, if anybody is in the market for silicone, like the two-part silicone mold putty, let me know because I can sell you 20 pounds of it at a good price. I have these, I have two like half full tubs and then I have two full tubs of silicone and I'm seriously thinking about just throwing it out. And I told my husband, he's like, ah, because he's thinking dollar signs going into the garbage. And I'm like, look, I already wrote it off on last year's taxes. I don't know if I want to make molds, to, you know, and what my plan was just to make some and have them in stock and sell them. I don't even know if I want to do that. So we'll see. But if anybody wants to buy silicone because you make molds, give me a, you know, send me a, send me a message. Don't call me. I was going to say, give me a call. Like, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Question. What can I change within my listings that won't hurt my rank? Photos, variations, descriptions. Variations is not a big deal. Um, descriptions generally is not a big deal. If you want to improve things, that's fine. Photos might be photos might be important. If you basically, if you have anything that's selling well, leave it alone. Don't touch it because you don't know what part of that listing is getting people to click through. It could be the title. It could be some of the tags that you have. It could be one of the photos is just appealing to people for some reason. So don't touch those. But if, if there's a listing that is doing nothing, then go crazy on it. It's not going to get worse, right? And if you're going to make things better, then that's always a good thing. So yeah, for listings that are doing really well, don't change anything. Start with the things that are doing nothing and work on those. And then maybe like inch your way up to things that are doing kind of okay. But if you have listings that sell all the time, don't touch them. That's just the easiest thing. And sometimes you have kind of a title that's in, eh, but you have a really good picture. And so you might be getting sales because of that picture and you don't realize it. So just be really reluctant to change anything on a listing that's selling. And as long as you're going to improve things, that's one thing. But if you're just changing things to change them, then don't do that. All right. Uh, let's see. I have boxes of materials for new products. Yeah, I've gotten me too. But so much of my time is building inventory for my... Uh, my, I, I can't read for my common selling plus cons constantly trying to get on the computer for research. How do you prioritize? Well, you can't sell it if you don't have it in the stock, in the, in stock. So I would say that if you have to choose between doing keyword research and getting things listed, get things listed. Cause you can have a listing that just takes off from nothing for, for whatever reason that you'll never know, but it won't do that unless you have it listed. It could be your best seller. Your best seller could be sitting on your desk right next to you. You don't know. Um, yeah, so I would prioritize 
um, I would prioritize that and SEO second. Because usually by the time you've got some stuff listed and you have some sales history, you know what people are searching for. So you don't have to do SEO research for every single listing. Just write it. Just write what they're what they're doing. Do you make molds? Yes. Well, I used to. Put it on eBay or Facebook. I might. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Um, question. Does Go Imagine allow original crochet patterns? As long as you have written them yourself? Yes. As far as I know. If, if it's, I think patterns are okay as long as you have designed them yourself. But that's the kind of thing that can get really tricky because people steal them. You know, as long as you're designing them yourself, that's okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Question. If after, now see, basically Botanical says make one change at a time. I tend to, dis if you've got a, if you have a listing that is crap, it's not selling, it's not getting views, why bother doing one change at a time? Just change everything. If, if it's not getting any traffic at all, go crazy. Just redo it. And I also would republish it as a new listing, like make a copy change everything and then publish that. Don't keep the old listing if it's a terrible listing. Um, but yeah, I I would not worry about changing good things, changing bad things. I wouldn't have a worry about changing them. And then the things that are, it's the things that are in the middle that you're like, oh, I don't know. So you might, that you might want to do one change at a time. I tend not to. I change things. I don't track it after that. I just see what happens. Don't do what I do. Do as I say, not as I do. Okay, question. If after Etsy announces changes, you determine it's not feasible to sell there, what would be your favorite handmade marketplace to sell on? I wouldn't probably, I would just probably, <laughs> that's a weird question because I haven't really thought about that. There aren't that many handmade marketplaces, are there? I mean, right now we've got Maker Place. I already have a shop on Go Imagine, so I would probably, I would stay on Go Imagine. I'd probably push my traffic there. I already don't push traffic to Etsy. So if I had to choose, I would just go all in on my website and probably if I wanted another platform that's going like a marketplace that's going to send traffic, I would do eBay. I would don't want to deal with Amazon because if you watch the video, I was just posted a video over on, it's actually on my Kate channel, but I posted links to it in the community tabs here um, about this, my stolen pictures on Amazon they won't take pictures down. And one thing that Amazon does is that if you have a listing on Amazon and then you shut your Amazon shop, they don't take the pictures down. They leave them there because that lures people to Amazon from outside search engines. And, you know, they get there and then it says this item is sold out and we don't know when it'll be restocked, but now they're on Amazon. So I don't, I won't do Amazon. Um, I probably would do eBay if I want to do a marketplace and like a big marketplace, but I, I don't know that I would at this point. I, I like selling on my website. I really like Go Imagine. I might try Michael's if I was looking for another marketplace that was available, if I had to, but I'm not planning on leaving Etsy. And it's, it's never going to be not feasible financially to sell there. Just raise your prices. That's, that's what you're going to have to do. So We'll see. Okay, question. I've been on Etsy for a few months now and I have 14 sales. I've updated my titles tags. I've just had 14 sales help. That's normal. Okay. Everybody, Sherry, let me ask you this. Have you been watching the I made $10,000 in a week on Etsy with no stock, no inventory, no skills, and it's a brand new shop videos? Because those are lies. <laughs> those videos are lies. I, I feel bad. For people that expect to list on Etsy and then get immediate sales, because that generally doesn't happen. So, you know, I I think you've you said you've had 14, 14 sales in a few months. That's that's pretty normal. And it's actually better than a lot of places. That's better than a that's better than a lot of shops do. It's better than a lot of sellers do. Uh, there's there's people who take eight months to get their first sale, and it's not a guarantee that just because you list it, people are going to buy it. And if you've gotten fourteen sales, then that's good. So don't be discouraged. It takes time, and come and hang out with us because we'll tell you the truth. I mean, the people the people that promise immediate sales and you're going to earn thousands of dollars a week, you know, in your first month are liars. 
They're looking at the outliers. They're looking, and those those people are generally, I, I, I'm not going to even get started because there was, uh, no, I'm not, I, mm, mm, I'm biting my tongue really hard, but you're doing fine. 14 sales in a first, in the first few months is good. And it just is going to get better from here. So you're doing fine. All right. Um, question. If someone buys multiples of the same item, does it get counted as one sale? Yes. The sales tally on the shop. Yeah, the sales tally on the shop is weird. Um, if, if somebody comes into your shop and buys 10 of the same item, then that's one sale. And that on the top, it says how many sales you've had. That'll go up by one. If they come in to buy 10 different things, that counts as 10 sales. So those sales numbers are completely inaccurate, which is one reason why a lot of the apps that say, we can tell you how many sales this person had, they're not, no, they can't. Because Etsy doesn't report sales in a normal way. <laughs> you know, it's it's items sold or duplicates of that item count as one. So I, your question made sense. And yeah, it's it's just a weird system. Um, anyway, uh, da, 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 da. Etsy's been an eBay has been a nightmare for you. Yeah, you know, it's everybody's going to have a, a different experience. I've I've sold on eBay before if I needed to, just casually. I I was going to start a shop there, and then I'm like, no, because you know what? On eBay, the conversion rate does matter, and I know everybody who watches this channel will go trotting over there. So I pulled back on that, but I I did, and I also am kind of winding things down. Right. I that's the question about what other marketplace would I use? I'm like, I don't know that I would. I would just stick with my my website. I'm already on Go Imagine. Um, and no, I'm not going to start my own platform. No. No, okay. Mm, mm, again. Okay, question. Any more updates on Novico launching? I'll stay on Etsy regardless and raise prices if necessary, just looking at diversifying. I have not heard anything. I know that they they had pushed back their launch. And in, in case you're not aware of this, Novica or Novica, however you want to pronounce it is okay, apparently. They chose the name of this business so that it would be pronounceable worldwide because it's an international business. It's handmade items from an international market. They They go and source things internationally and then they sell them on the website. You can go to, it's Novica, novica.com. Um, they have been talking about starting a handmade marketplace and you can sign up to get notifications about it. So go ahead. I spoke to the founder of Novica about it a while back and he said they were still ramping up and I gave him some thoughts and they pushed the start back a little bit. Um so I think they're working out some things. They're, you know, they're just getting things in place so that they can bring a handmade marketplace, you know, when they're ready, if they're ready. I mean, they might change their mind. I don't know. I have nothing to do with that business. But there is a place that you can sign up on their website to get notifi notified when they do open it up. So I I don't know when that's going to happen. If it's going to happen, they might have changed their mind about it. But you can go to the website to find out. And if that does happen and you do make handmade items, I think that would probably be a good option because it is, it's probably international. I would think it's a well-known brand. I'll have to wait and see, but I'll probably talk to him again um, about it and we'll have more information about that when it happens. Okay. Um, question. Lots of views and those were organic also. Thanks for the comments and advice. I'm not a quitter. Oh, that's Sherry. Okay. So good. I'm, I'm glad that you're not going to quit. A lot of people will come on there and say, I didn't make any sales in a week on Etsy. I quit. Don't do that. Because if you are making sales, then that's, you know, it, it it's proof of concept. It shows that people are buying your stuff. So that's good. So that's good. All right. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Okay. Question. Do you know if Michael's maker place, uh, remit sales tax for the sellers? I don't know. I would assume that they do, but I am not on it. So I'm not sure if anyone is on the Michael's and you could let us know in the chat about that, that would be good. Okay. When it's slow, may I post one of my titles here for an opinion? Ah, if you want, just, just go ahead. Um, we could do like a little, we could do a little critique. Okay. Da, 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 da. 
does anyone know how I'm just I'm just wondering about it. Does anyone know how long Etsy has been doing the slide in window from the right hand sale of your screen to remind you that you favorited something and and <laughs> nudging you to buy it? It's been for that's been a while and they do it for the shopping cart too. I've seen that for at least a year, at least a year. But I don't know how long it's been because I think, oh, it's been about a year and then it's been 10 years. So who knows? Okay, question. Do you all know anything about, uh, what is it? Vera, supposedly a brand new marketplace. Veru, what is it? Veni, Veni. Never heard of it. Never. <laughs> oh my God. No, I've never heard of Veni. I don't know. Kara's new platform, The Claw. No tinfoil hats allowed. Wow. You know what? If if I started my own marketplace, it would be called, I would call it Claw Mart. How's that? Claw Mart. I should go get the domain now. No, because I'm never going to do my own. I, I know. Can you guys imagine how hard it would be to run a marketplace? And to deal with all the stupid questions that you're going to get from people, would you want to be Etsy support? I mean, we we are hard on Etsy support. I say we trash Etsy support a lot. And most of the time they don't know what they're talking about, so they deserve it. But I wouldn't want to work that phone line. <laughs> you could not pay me to work that phone line. If I worked the phone line, I'd actually be able to help people. But uh, no, that's not a job that I would want. So anyway, do it, Kara. I already have the artist and shopping directory. It's not a it's not a marketplace per se, but it it does deal with promoting other people's businesses. I'm not going to start a place where I have to handle sales tax. No, but Clawmart would be good. Why are you not talking about the bestseller badge and different Etsy search Monday? What searches? Wait, oh my god. Monday video ever happened. What the hell does that mean? Why are you not talking about the bestseller badge and different Etsy searches? I did the video about it. Did the Monday video ever happen? It happened yesterday. Um, if anyone has questions about it, this is for q and A. It's a q and A. I'm not talking about it because I have I have the video to talk about it. And if you guys have questions, feel free. It would be like herding a flock of flies. Yes, hire. I would hire support staff. Yeah. Yeah. Feel free to ask a question. Theme Park West. Is that James? I see Theme Park in there. I hope it's you. Anyway, question. Do you know if you're able to change your website URL after you've launched your Shopify website with a different URL? Yeah, you could probably just, you know, do a redirect. Would it affect your standing with Google if you change it later on? Google doesn't care. No, just do a redirect and then um, the old website would go to the new one. I think you'd have to register both. It shouldn't be a big deal. Support, no. Okay, it's quiet. What time is it? 2.47. I'm getting texts over here. Who's texting me? Oh, yeah. Yeah, see? Ah. Okay, does nobody have questions? Does anyone have any questions about my video yesterday? Did you see my video that I posted yesterday that Theme Park West is referring to? It's about how Etsy search is working now. I did actually mention it earlier, um, but it's it's like there's different search engines. Etsy has three or four different search engines all working together, and they're separate systems. So, you know, you might get caught up in one, the customers might get caught up in the other, hard to say. Okay, question, give us a bread update. I haven't made any bread recently um, because I'm, I'm trying to decide where, is, is sourdough worth it is my question and probably not, I think, unless you have a really good sourdough, anyway. Uh, I do see Emily's question. I'll go back to it. Theme Park West. James, is that you? Okay. Anyway, where is the video? Facebook? It's on, it's on YouTube. It's on my, it's on the tutorials channel. It's Kara Bunton tutorials and it's all there. And I think that that video is, is what you were talking about, right? Did you see it? It's on, it's on the Kara Bunton tutorials. Go watch it. It was a good one. Okay. 
All right, Emily's question says, is there a way to essentially copy exactly what I have on my Etsy shop to a Shopify website? I I think that there must be a way, I know that you can download all of your Etsy listings to a CSV file, and then you would have to format it for Shopify or do whatever their process is, but you should be able to upload things. I would say yes. I'm not sure if that's optimal because you might have to go, through, you're still going to have to go through and update listings so that they're not Etsy specific, like linked, like click here to go to my Etsy shop, my homepage, that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, you should be able to do that with the CSV file. And that's in the, in your shop dashboard. It says like options, download data, and you can download all your listings there. Okay. Um, Amanda says Shopify doesn't let you change your admin URL. You should be able to do a redirect though, wouldn't you? Wouldn't that work? I don't know. Maybe you can't. I, it won't bother Google, but maybe Shopify has limitations about that. Okay, question. Am I right that you have to set up sales tax yourself on WooCommerce and Shopify? Yes, because those those are just web hosts. They're like they host your site, but they don't do the stuff for you. However, um, it is you. Hi, James. Um, anyway, if if you have... Most people don't have to collect U.S. sales tax except for the state that you live in. So it's not that difficult because the thresholds in most states are so high that you're never going to have to collect sales tax. You're going to have to go and check because if you live like close to another state where you do a lot of sales or if you have nexus in another state, if you do like shows or something like that, you might have to do sales tax there. So it's going to be different for everyone. But in general... You don't have to collect and remit sales tax until you hit those thresholds, and they're pretty high. So you'd have to check, but they don't collect them for you. Okay. You have to do that yourself. I do it myself for my own website, and it's not hard because I just have to do Virginia. All right. Question. How many marketplaces should one sell on? That is totally up to you. I sell on Etsy and Go Imagine, And if I wanted to, I guess the third one would be the maker place thing just to try it out, but I don't want to. So you could sell on as many as you want if you want to put up with that. But it's it's just like how many things do you want to keep track of? That's the problem. And there's my mental limit is is past. I've passed my mental limit at this point and I'm I'm not going to add anything else to it. Okay, question. Do you think Etsy will emphasize local sales even more with the changes in order to compete better with Amazon and Novica? I don't know. I don't think that they're emphasizing local sales as much as people think they are. Um, maybe maybe regional sales. I don't know. I mean, I'm still getting sales from everywhere in the U.S. I don't ship internationally anymore, so I'm not sure about that. But I know that some countries have more localization than others. And they've never said that they're doing localization in the U.S., but it's pretty clear that they are, especially at certain times of the year. But I don't, I don't think that it, it's definitely not limited to local sales. They don't limit you to local sales. It's, I, I sell everywhere. So, you know, it, it could, I mean, what they should do is see where the postal service is backed up and just stop letting people order from there. That would be good. But, you know, okay. Question. Why doesn't Etsy rank uh longtime sellers higher? Because it doesn't, just because you've been on Etsy for a long time, doesn't mean you're a better and sometimes that would be worse. Um, and then you continue, says, I see shops similar to mine selling 2023 with more sales than I do and have no SEO announcements policy or social media. That's because on Etsy, if you come in and you sell something, then they show that thing again and then it just snowballs. So yeah, it's age, age on Etsy is not a benefit and it, it just isn't. If you've got sales, then that's where it's at. But you still have to do SEO to get those sales. And if they just have the title, but remember that we just said that tags are optional. So as long as you have a decent title and you're making sales, then Etsy's going to continue to show those. And that's what's going to get the sales. But age on Etsy doesn't matter. It honestly doesn't. Okay. Um Question, I heard the Makerplace has some sketchy stuff in the terms and conditions. 
Uh, yeah, basically saying they own whatever you post on their site. Yeah, I heard that. But if you actually read what it says, it's not that. It's just like the they they can use your pictures in their their um, publicity and that kind of stuff. As far as I know, it's it's the same terms and conditions that Etsy has. And you know, people get mad when Etsy uses their pictures for offsite ads, and they're like, "That's illegal! You're using my pictures." It's like, no, you agreed to that when you signed up on Etsy, and nobody ever reads the terms and conditions. If you don't trust a platform, don't sell on it. Problem solved. So um, there you go. I'm sure age on Etsy is a beneficial factor from the viewpoint of the buyer, though. Possibly. Yeah. But the thing is that if they never see your products, then why does it matter? Right. I, th I think buyers probably have more trust in people that have been on Etsy longer. But at the same time, the search algorithms are weighted toward things that sell. And if a new shop comes in and starts selling things right away, for whatever reason, for whatever reason, there's a lot of sketchy stuff that goes on. Then that is what Etsy is going to continue to show because that's, that's just merchandising. That's that's normal. OK, uh, let's see. Question. Please don't be upset with this question. OK, people in the chat. OK, everybody be nice. Are we still charged for Etsy shipping labels, even if we use another company? It seems like it's taken out. No, what happened? Why would we be care? We wouldn't be upset with that. No, um, people talk about Etsy shipping labels and the charges and the fees, and it's, it's confusing. You only, you pay Etsy a fee, a transaction fee based on what the customer pays to you. It has nothing to do with the shipping label, okay? It's just the cost of shipping that you are charging the customer. So let's say you have $10 for the item and $5 for shipping. Your transaction fee is 6.5% of 10 plus 5. So it'd be 6.5 of 15 because that's the total amount that the customer paid to you. That's just for the transaction. That has nothing to do with the shipping label. After that, you go and you can buy the shipping label anywhere you want. And you just have to expense that out at the end of the year as the cost of one of your expenses. But you don't pay a fee on that. That's just the cost of the label. That's not a fee. So I think people think of shipping labels as fees and ads as fees, but they're not because you don't have to buy them on Etsy and those are op ads are optional. Shipping labels on Etsy are optional unless you want to get the purchase protection and you don't have a way to put tracking in. And then if you buy the label on Etsy, then that's covered. But yeah, it's you. there's fees on the money that the customer pays to you. There is no fee when you buy the label over the cost of the label. So if I pay $3 for the shipping label, that's what I pay. But I'm not paying a transaction fee on that. So, yeah. It is confusing, though, because people talk about shipping transaction fees, and you think that has something to do with buying the label, but it's not. That's just an expense. Oh, okay. And that might be all. We're at 257. Are there any more questions? I just got a small shipping fee Etsy charged me. Was that on the the fee that they charged you for the transaction amount that the person paid you for the label? If you're international, it could be a fee for the currency conversion. You know, I mean, there's they get you many ways. You know, if you're doing currency conversions, there's a fee for that. They don't they don't charge you for a like a fee above and beyond the cost of the shipping label unless your country has imposed taxes that go on that which is weird but i'm sure some countries have done that um and then the currency conversion fees and that kind of stuff but it's just you know you're paying for the label but then if if there are additional charges that your country imposes possibly there is something but that's not an etsy thing that's something from your government so we can all thank our politicians for that but it's just the cost of the label and then the fee is what you pay for based on what the customer paid you all right all right i think that's it for today i don't see any more questions Okay, it says transaction fee shipping. Yes, yeah, that's the transaction that the customer paid you and you're paying the fee on that money that came in to your account from the customer. After that, there's no fee after that other than the cost of the label. Yeah, that's the 6.5%. That's not the cost of the label. That's just what they were, what you were paid by the customer. So it's two separate things. It's two separate things. Okay. 
All right. I will talk to you guys later. Have a good afternoon. Now I have to figure out how to turn this thing off. Give this video a thumbs up before you leave. And thank you to Bill. I always forget to say thank you to Bill. But thank you, Bill, uh, for being my moderator. I will talk to you guys later. I see another question, but it's over. It's over. I have to stop. I have to stop. Okay. Post that question under the video and I can answer it in the comments there. Okay. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good afternoon. Bye.